At this hour, Kenyan security forces claim to be in control of the Westgate Premier Shopping Mall in Nairobi, Kenya, a site of one of the most horrifying terror attacks in recent memory. The Kenyan Interior Ministry saying our forces are combing the mall floor by floor, looking for anyone left behind. We believe all hostages have been released. This hour, the Kenyan government hasn't yet made a full accounting. Midday Saturday, Nairobi, Kenya, a mall that could easily be mistaken for any major mall in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, fell under attack by 10 to 15 gunmen, reportedly from the Islamist al-Shabaab militia. One eyewitness was an American who had recently moved to Nairobi from North Carolina. You could hear, while we were back there, them methodically kind of going from store to store, talking to people asking questions, shooting, screams, and then it would stop for a while and then they would go to another store. Another eyewitness, a software engineer who was in the parking lot with his two daughters, said they were throwing grenades like maize to chickens. He and his daughter survived. But at last count, at least 62 people have died in the attack. Most of the dead were Kenyans, along with foreigners from Britain, France, Australia, Canada, and India. At one point, terrorists started a fire in the mall, which, according to security forces, was meant as a diversion. A reported 175 people were wounded in a siege that entered its third day today. At least three assailants have been killed by security forces with at least 10 suspects arrested. The attackers also took hostages as the standoff proceeded. We have done search of the building and we can confirm that uh, the hostages, almost all of them have been evacuated. The Kenyan Foreign Minister Amina Mohammed has since told Al Jazeera the mall attack was the work of Al-Qaeda, not Al-Shabaab. More on that in just a second. Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta said that one of his nephews was in the mall and killed in the attack. General Julius Karangi, the chief of the Kenyan Defense Forces, said the terrorists are clearly a multinational collection from all over the world. The FBI is looking into reports that Americans were among the attackers. New York Times photographer Tyler Hicks happened to be nearby the mall when the siege began. He entered the mall along with police officers and captured these stunning images. Once I got inside the mall, I could see how tense everyone was, the army and police, how carefully they were moving. They were dashing across open areas, taking extreme care with their cover. It seemed kind of like anywhere you looked, there would be uh, another body. People were still hiding in shops, and as the police and uh, the army were moving through, they would either discover people or they would sense that help had arrived, and then they would flood out. So you get kind of moments of silence and then other moments of big streams of people who they were trying to get out as quickly as possible. It really seemed like everywhere we went, they, more people came out of the woodwork. And at one sense, it seemed very abandoned. And for example, the music uh, that plays in the shopping mall, the typical kind of music was still playing on the intercom. And, and so it was kind of this eerie silence with this music, interrupted occasionally by gunfire. Terrified people were crying, screaming, just running for their lives, really. I never thought that I would encounter this kind of tragedy in a public place like this, where um, completely innocent, civilians were just gunned down and murdered. It's not like a conventional war where you expect uh, combatants to get hurt or expect there to be collateral damage in those kind of situations. This is just a, a, a suicide mission and, um, and murder. Joining me now is Jeremy Scahill, my colleague at The Nation magazine, where he's national security correspondent. He's also author of the book Dirty Wars, The World's a Battlefield, producer and writer of the film by the same name. And Jeremy, you were in Somalia. There's footage in that film of being on a rooftop with incoming fire from Al-Shabaab fighters, basically. What do you make of this, the conflicting reports about whether al-Shabaab or al-Qaeda did it, and who is al-Shabaab, and how are they different from al-Qaeda? Right, well, for, first of all, al-Shabaab was, they were a group of relative nobodies in 2006 during the Bush administration. They were a sort of outlier in a group uh, called the Islamic Courts Union, which was largely made up of, uh, almost exclusively made up of, of Somali uh, uh, actors, and, um, and these actors meaning players on the scene in Somalia. And al-Shabaab was the sort of uh, group uh, among those that, that sort of had the most allegiance to al-Qaeda or affinity for Osama bin Laden's message, but they had no political sway whatsoever domestically within Somalia. The U.S. partnered with the Ethiopian military in 2006, 2007, and staged an invasion of Somalia. And they dismantled the, this government of the Islamic Courts Union, which was the only government that brought stability in Somalia since the Black Hawk Down episode and the fall of Siad Bari's regime. So what ended up happening as a result of that is that the Shabaab became the vanguard uh. of, of what was viewed as a movement to fight off a crusading force backed by the United States. 
United States. And so Shabab started to get street credibility within Somalia because they were the only ones fighting. The rest of those networks had been disrupted, co-opted, killed, or imprisoned by the Americans and Ethiopians. And, and so what, what happened at the end of the day is that al-Qaeda was able to get a foothold in Somalia, and it never had been able to before. Bin Laden desperately wanted to get into Somalia, and Somalis rejected him. The U.S. invasion with, with Ethiopia opened the door, and Shabab has gotten increasingly militant as the years have gone on. And they now uh, appear to have a kind of transnational agenda if, in fact, this is Somali al Shabab fighters behind this. Why would they attack a Kenyan mall? Right. Well, there's a long history of Al Qaeda in East Africa, and then eventually Al Shabab staging attacks in in Kenya and elsewhere in Africa. Of course, the embassy there was bombings. the embassy bombings in '98 in Tanzania and and Kenya. But then there also was a 2002 attempt to shoot down Israeli aircraft in Mombasa. Um, then you had the bombing at the World Cup in 2010 in uh, in Uganda. An American citizen was killed in that, and as well as a number of, of Ugandans. Um, and I think that you know if you if you look at the the past two years, Kenya has been deeply involved with Somali politics, funding warlords. I traveled with a Kenyan-backed warlord who had brand new military equipment that had been given to him in the summer of 2011, and then Kenya actually staged an invasion of parts of southern Somalia. And I think that Shabab really has seized on this idea that Kenya is sort of a puppet or, or a proxy for the U.S., and that's really the, the message that they've propagandized. What does it say about the state of Al Qaeda or global jihadis in 2013 that this attack happened, that it's coming from possibly Somalia? It seems to me like it's the situation in which we smash one or disrupt one network and they seem to pop up somewhere else. Right. You know, something interesting is that when I was last in Somalia in the summer of 2011, the head of Al Qaeda in East Africa was killed in Mogadishu, uh, Fazul Mohammed. And among the documents that were seized, and I reported on this in my book, were letters from Fazul to Ayman al-Zawahiri, the number two in al-Qaeda. And what Fazul said was that Shabab is making a mistake by trying to hold territory in Somalia. And what, what you need to do is go back to managing savagery. Hmm. And, and there's a famous al-Qaeda paper that's written by an anonymous author called The Management of Savagery. And the idea is make it impossible for anyone else to govern. Make people feel fear and that the government can't protect them. And, and I think Chaos. that's part of what we're seeing. But, but Shabab, there's no one al-Shabab right now, which is why you see the Kenyans saying They have this. splintered right. and it's unclear who, who is exactly controlling organization right. journalist Jeremy Scahill. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll be right back with Click 3.